Are you like a bobblehead? <laughs> that would be like this. I'd be doing this. Is that pretty good? That's I gotta be careful if I pull something. That's what yeah. happens when you get old. You wake up and you pulled something from No, sleeping. what happened the last time I, I pulled something, uh, I was getting dressed on the day that Lorna came to visit. And that apparently getting dressed is high risk behavior. Well, you are 40 now. When you become um, a certain age. Yep, old and infirm. Yeah. Getting dressed, putting a shirt on, high risk behavior. Mm -hmm. So be careful, guys. Be careful out there. Just don't get dressed. I mean, you could just not get dressed. That would work. Sure. Or not sleep. I pull, I pull muscles like sleeping, you know, mm -hmm. all that fun stuff. Well, you're really old, so. Oh, it's true. It's true. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Courtney, he says, here for the tease relief. Listen, I get it. I teased a little bit. Maybe I could have shown. I, I probably should have given a little bit more uh, on the sourcing video of my tease because I did. I teased it right in the title. So that was a little cruel of me. It however, a little cruel. however, I will say at least you only have to wait one day and the reality is the majority of people that are going to watch that video probably after this, this show airs. So hopefully they'll be able to go right away and watch it. But I promise there's payoff. In fact, I have not only do I have the item that I tease in the sourcing video, I actually have a few, I feel like I've got some really good stuff to show today. Yeah, I, I do. Yeah. I think so too. I think we all had a pretty good sourcing week. But I think my haul, the haul part of this video is going to make up for my lame sales performance when we go over our numbers here shortly mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you whooped me this last week. Like I've said it before, but this week she really, you're like double your, uh, I think you're, yeah, you're double gross and net my numbers. So sorry. You whooped me. Sorry, not sorry. But I do have, like I said, I do have some seriously when it comes to like, especially, you know, streetwear, I've got some awesome scores this week. I mm -hmm. can't even handle it. Um, so I already, what's going on here? And we're talking, they're talking about somebody, uh, Sharon asked a question about oh, I see. Ac accepting offers. So gotcha, they got gotcha. it. People, people in the chat are covering it. Yeah. It, no, ignore. They're talking about, but just, just to put it out there, they're talking about um, when somebody says, you know, offers, makes an offer and then they say, and free shipping in their message, doesn't matter. Honestly, I just ignore it. So, well, you have free shipping on everything anyway, so it doesn't really matter. What's weird though, if it's I actually do okay, I did at one point I did do uh, I did charge for shipping and I would ignore it and whatever. But uh, the other day, somebody did make an offer and they made sure to put in the note and free shipping, which I thought was funny. And at first, I thought, well, they must be international. Nope, they just wanted to. They were really adamant. They really wanted to make sure they weren't going to charge. You weren't going to change it. Mm -hmm. Anyway. All right. So happy Sunday, everybody. Hope you all had a good week enjoying mm -hmm. this weekend. I, I saw Kara said it's stormy Florida right now. So she's got some uh, some rain going on. Uh, we've had fantastic weather this week. So I'm happy. I'm mm -hmm. not going to complain about it being cold for this time of year anymore because now we are full on yeah. Vegas well, summer. I, I get to still complain because you like to crank the air conditioning so high. That's true. And then she's like, oh, go put, go put some socks on, put a sweatshirt on. And I'm like, I, I'm in my own home in Vegas. I shouldn't have to bundle up, so I will still be complaining about being cold. That's but true. we did get to uh, hit the pool a couple times this last week with mm -hmm. Lorna, mm -hmm. and I believe we're gonna we're gonna hop in there after the show because it's it's not crazy hot. It's just in the nineties, but yeah, it's been nineties up to a hundred or so. I think we hit a hundred a couple times this week, so it's perfect. Actually, mm -hmm. this is perfect weather in my opinion. It's perfect for the pool. It's perfect for going outside. You're not sweaty and gross. Anything over, say, 105, which it will be within the next week or so, is when it starts to get dicey. Nah, I say over 110. I personally love it when it's in the hundreds here because we can. It's perfect. It makes the pool that much better. Yeah. So, um, so I'm drinking my my old people uh, my old people Kool Aid, as Katie calls it, my cool pink <laughs> eBay cup, uh, my Crystal Light old people Kool Aid. You didn't have ice in it. I did have ice. It melted. I was gonna say like. Old people Kool-Aid with no ice. It's cold. What's it's so cold. What's happening? Uh, Dupage pick hair. <laughs> Greg says, I was have to say it like that. Greg says, uh, Godzilla items are flying out of the store. Thank you, movie industry. That's very exciting. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I, I don't think I have any. I had a Godzilla t-shirt a while ago, but I don't think I have it anymore. Um, anyway, so so we, we're going to go over our sales numbers as usual. Then we're going to show our sales highlights, which this one over here, she sent me all her sales highlights. And she's like, here's 10 listings. Uh, it's 10 sales I want to share. And so then I had to sit there and, 
and cry quietly to myself while I struggled to find 10 souls that I was willing to share with you guys, but whatever. So whatever. So I got, some, so I don't have a lot of sales. Okay. I don't, well, whatever. So thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for pointing out how inadequate I am, but that's sorry. okay. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll make sure that I sell less so to make you feel better. <laughs> no, I don't want you to. I need you to sell a lot so that you can uh, keep me in this lifestyle that I've grown accustomed to. Okay. Um, anyway, that really just means lots of tacos. Um, Your tacos are expensive. What? And tacos are not expensive. No. What am I eating? Gold tacos over here? Um, anyway, all right. So let's get into uh, let's get into our, our our sales numbers. All right. And uh, I'm gonna go first again because otherwise, it just makes me look real bad. Okay, I'm sorry. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. All right. She's my sugar mama. Anyway, so um, so for this last week, man, my last couple of weeks, my sales have been. It's like they dropped dramatically, dramatically. So you know what? I'm not too worried about it. It happens. I'm, I'm my sale. My eBay sales numbers are at where they were last year, which was not so great uh, for the summertime sales. Uh, but if you remember last year, that's when I kicked into doing, um, uh, that's when I kicked into doing Etsy. And so now this year, even though my sales numbers are back to where they were last year, guess what? Still at over $2,000 in sales uh, for the last month uh, on Etsy. So it kind of like, it's, it's holding me up, it's holding me above water. Um, but anyway, so let's look at what I got for this last week. Um, eBay, 26 orders, Etsy, nine for a total of 35, not a whole lot. Um, eBay gross sales, $964.06. Etsy, $546.22. Thank you, Etsy. Um, from a total gross sales of $1,510.28. And my shipping, $117.30. Promotional fees for both platforms, $68.43. eBay final value fees, $115.69. Etsy fees, $49.16. So my total costs, uh, $350.58. My COGS, cost of goods, $150. So my total net sales, I just squeaked in with $1,009.70. My gross, um, average sale price, $43.15. And my net is $28.85. So that's where it's like, it's really gotten down a lot is my average sale price. Cause like, mm -hmm. I was seriously, like I've got a couple of sales this last week that were a little bit higher, but I don't think any of them broke a hundred dollars. I'm right at a hundred on a couple of them. Um, but for the most part, it was like every day, just kind of like crawling, you know, 20, crawling. $25 sale here, $28 sale there, $35 sale there. Like just, just kind of, I, I was working for my living this last week, you know, sorry. It's real sad. Sorry. Real sad. But you know what? When you guys see what I got this week, I really scored. I just, I have so much cool stuff to add. Like I, all I want to do is list because I'm so excited about getting some of the stuff I've already listed because when I really find something super cool, I want to take pictures of it like right then and there and get it listed immediately. I have listed 48 items mm -hmm. in between yesterday and today. And that's pretty awesome. Like all you guys who like have struggle with, with um, making yourselves list. I, the more excited I am about an item, the more I want to get it listed. And so it's actually really great for motivating myself to, to get to work on getting stuff. Right. And we did not list a lot this week because we did a lot of sourcing with Lorna. And mm -hmm. we spent, we yeah. did a lot of Thanks friend a lot, time. Lorna. We did a lot of friend time. So we didn't do a lot of hard work this week. So, uh, Red Neckerson's resales, Nathan just busted out dollar seventy seven super chat. I think he's trying to make me feel better. And you know what? I'm keeping that dollar seventy seven for myself. I'm not sharing with you at all. Okay. Okay. I'm right. going to get that. I'm going to get half a taco with that. And okay. I'm going to enjoy every second of it. Okay? Right. okay. I might go into your change jar in your office to get the other half so I can get a whole taco and I'm going to eat it. And I'm going to think about you and I'm going to laugh and I'm going to be like, go get your own tacos with your $5 million. Okay. All right. So thank you for the dollar 77. Are you waiting for it? You ready? Please get it over with so I can use my, do my notes. Yay! See, Therese, T Money says that would be stealing. <laughs> it would be, wouldn't it? Thank you. She just admitted uh, to everyone that she was going to creep into my office and steal from me. Uh, go ahead. All right. So here are my numbers for the week, which were actually good because last week they weren't fantastic. This week they were good. Um, 
So I sold uh, 59 uh, items on eBay and just one lousy item on Etsy. It was actually one good item on Etsy uh, for a total of 60. And I did just under $3,000 this week on eBay. So $29.55 or $29.56 if you're rounding up. Etsy, I had one item sell, but it was a good one for about $85. So my total gross sales were just over $3,000, so $3,040. My shipping, again, we know I do heavy shipping. I do charge uh, for shipping, so that's included in my gross uh, total sales for a lot of uh, the heavier items I do charge on. So my shipping costs were $463. Uh, promoted listing fees were $62 and change eBay final value fee is $295, Etsy final value fee is $765 for total costs of $827. And my cost of goods, $295. If you look at these numbers week after week after week, you will see that some consistency here, at least with my numbers and again with Katie's up quite frequently as well. My cost of goods is almost always just about exactly 10% of my gross sales. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that tells you that you know buy low, sell high. Uh, so my total net sales. Wait, 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 wait. What? <laughs> uh, shut up, jerk. <laughs> so my total net sales, uh, just under two thousand dollars. So one thousand nine hundred and seventeen dollars. My average sale price is up a little bit. Uh, this is where I like to be around the fifty dollars range. And my net sale, uh, net average sale price is about thirty two dollars. Uh, yeah, just a Pacman. Three thousand a week is seriously crushing it. That's crazy awesome. And if you notice, because you know the way that I've been been doing the titles for these um, Sunday shows the last what a couple of months, uh, I do it's our combined cost of goods and our combined gross sales. So really, Vicky's been carrying me the last couple of weeks. Uh, but you'll see it always does. It's really close to ten percent. So like right now, our title is four hundred and forty five dollars into four thousand five hundred fifty one. It is consistently like that every week. So apparently. We both like the concept of buy low, sell high. Mm -hmm. Just saying. for sure. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, yeah, Teresa. If I was nice to Vicky, she might take me out and buy me tacos. You know what? She I got me last night. the most delicious, delicious uh, carne asada fries last night. We went to this place, and you had uh, that burrito that was. I had awesome. half a burrito. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. It was very, very spicy. In fact, I wish I had taken the other half yeah. home instead of our mouths were on there. fire. Uh, yeah, we went to a uh, went out with a couple of friends last night. We went to a like a wine tasting. They call it a wine walk uh, downtown at the Container Park. It was pretty fun. It was like twenty five bucks a person for three hours. It's unlimited wine. I'm not mm. a big drinker. I was. We had these goblets of wine, uh, and I was like two half a goblets yeah. in and that was my that was my limit so was i'm a cheap date i like i, I mm -hmm. definitely paid my 25 dollars was pretty much what i would have paid to go out and have two yeah. glasses of wine or maybe one big glass of wine so that was my lightweightness mm -hmm. uh but that was it my my yeah. two half and it was prosecco so yeah i mean it was pretty cool it wasn't really a wine tasting it was just it was a wine walk like you pay you buy your ticket for 30 bucks and then you get three hours and they it's in the container park where I don't know if any of you guys have been there before, if you've been in Vegas or if you come to Vegas, you should definitely go visit it. Cause it's really, really cool. It's basically, they built like this kind of outdoor shopping center. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all built with, uh, with, with like those containers, shipping, like, containers. shipping containers. So mm -hmm. like from trains um, and it's multi-level and it's kind of in a big, I guess, sort of square, square. circle kind mm -hmm. of thing. And so you go in and there's kind of a courtyard and there's a stage. There's always live music going and there's all these little shops and it's really neat. And so they had like three or four different locations because there's bars and, and restaurants. They had four, there. four locations that mm -hmm. were serving um, yeah. different types of wines. Yeah. Uh, and what's nice about the container park, when they first started a few years ago, they actually opened it and gave it. It was, for, it was specifically for local uh, small businesses. And I think it still is. Um, and they gave all of the small businesses free rent for a year to give them a chance to, mm -hmm. they had to apply uh, to get accepted into the program. And they gave all these small businesses free rent for a year to get their businesses off the ground. And some of them are still there. Some of them didn't make it, uh, but some of them are still there. Yeah. It's kind of a great concept. Uh, Alexis, no. The other half of the burrito was in my belly. Yeah, Katie ate about half of the other the other half. I'm I'm kind of like but burritos are not on my yeah. diet, so I had half one. No, well, this is what really happened. She she had her two half glasses of wine, and so then she was like, "Woo! I'm gonna get a burrito." 
<laughs> she may have had her shirt off too. I'll just say that. Not really. But she was like, I'm going to get a burrito. And I'm like, do you want to share that burrito? And she's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, you can't even eat a whole burrito normally. And you haven't been eating a, as big of portions lately. And I'm like, there's no way you're going to eat a whole burrito. And she's like, yeah, whatever. And so then I was like, oh, I'm going to get those carne asada fries. And she's like, oh, you can share those with me. And I said, I don't know. You can share your burrito with me. And so she had half her burrito. I ate the other half. And then she had like a look, some of my fries, not a lot of them, but uh, some of my fries. But but seriously, guys, she was real. Those I two, had like three fries. Two really half good. glasses of wine made her feel real confident about her ability to eat a burrito. Um, yeah, it was pretty funny. It was a real good burrito, though. I'm kind of wishing I still had that half. Uh, yeah, no, no burritos were left behind, Alexis. Don't you worry about that. And yes, Lorna, that is the place with the locks outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was really fun. And the band they had was um, a 90s cover band, which they were pretty mediocre. The band but, was kind of crappy, but the music was good. The, but the, well, their, their, their uh, set choices, list, yes. their set list was good. Because it was like 90s grunge stuff, so it was fun. They're, I think they're called the Flannel the flannel Station. The Flannel Shirts or something? I it's like called know. the Flannel Station. I, I don't know. Anyway, they do all 90s covers and stuff like that. Uh, real quick, Dawn says, thanks so much for the Les Miserables sweatshirt. Did you buy it from me? Am I am I horrible? And I didn't know that some, one of you guys bought uh, the Les Miserables t-shirt from me or sweatshirt. I, I apologize for not knowing. Um, but I'm super excited that you, because I sold one recently. Many compliments and a few friends want to buy it off you. And you're like, no way. And as I say, how rude. How rude. Scroll down. Okay. That's another question. <clears throat> do either of us have ADD with the way that we talk? You would think that one of us does, <laughs> but no, uh, she's talking about the number of listings that you did. So I did 38 listings yesterday. Uh, I, all my photographs were already, were already done. Mm -hmm. It's just, I, we list, I listed for seven hours. Yeah. That's, that's not the norm, a normal, like good day of listing for 20 you to 25. Is like 20 to 25. Mm -hmm. So that's not normal. Um, I will do, if I'm like really like busting out the jams, like I will get 30 listings. Of course I'm cross, when I list, I cross post to Etsy too. So like if I do 30 listings, that means I did 30 usually on both because most of my stuff is vintage on both eBay and Etsy. Um, but for me, when I'm going super fast, it's because I'm doing a lot of similar stuff. So I might usually, if I'm doing 30 in one day, it's cause I did 30 t-shirts and I can bust those out pretty quickly. But yeah. that's if I had ADD, I would have one listing. Maybe. Yeah, you're right. If I had ADD, that'd be very, I think I, I can't imagine how people stay focused in this mm -hmm. job. If you have any ADD with maybe medication would help, but yeah. uh, I can't imagine staying focused enough to, to get that many listings done. Well, and, and I just wanted to clarify because we don't want to like give anybody the wrong impression that like, Oh, we're hanging out doing 50 listings a day. Cause no, we're not, no, we're not, not, those, every day. We're not those kinds of sellers. Some people do. And when I hear that they regularly do 50 a day, I'm, I'm impressed. Like, I'm impressed and I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. So, Hey, uh, so Teresa says, OMG, just knows Jesus in the back. Keep an eye on you girls. First of all, Teresa, that's my G back there. Okay. That's my G. And it tells me that maybe you haven't been paying so much attention because my G's been there for a while and he's not just any Jesus. Let me grab him real quick. Uh, this, I got this. I got this guy from uh, Allison Big Drift Thrift. He hearts skiing. Okay, because in my dream world, I would find the most amazing skiing T-shirt, but it would be Jesus skiing um, because I love my skiing stuff and my Jesus stuff. So he's just gonna hang out back here and come back. But yes, he is hanging out because you always gotta have G get your back. You know. You know what I'm saying? And, yes. And Shamrock Pixie, you're welcome. I'm glad that uh, we were able to make you smile a little bit. Um, she had this crazy, scary, her like spleen ruptured a couple of weeks ago out of nowhere. And uh, she was had some time, spent some time in the hospital. It was a lot of, a lot of health stuff happening. So I'm glad that we were able to make you smile. We sent her a little care package. Mm -hmm. um, okay. uh, Kara, what would Jesus sell? WWJS. Honestly, I think Jesus would be the worst seller ever because what would happen is people would send him those messages where they'd say, listen, I'm having a really bad day. That t-shirt's awesome. It would make me really happy. And then he'd just like send it to him for free. And, uh, and he wouldn't make any money. He wouldn't make any money. But that'd be okay because everyone would love him. Um, <laughs> anyway, but yeah, so so Don is the one that bought that, um, that sweatshirt from me. I I'm glad that. that you love it. And I'm sorry. Listen, guys, if you ever buy something from me, 
um, make sure you put in a message that that you're uh, that you watch our show. Because yeah, we'll same. Probably we'll give you a better deal. In there. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, yeah, pretty much. Well, that one I think I took an offer on it, so they got a good deal. Um, all right, do you want to talk about our? highlights of the week are sold highlights yeah let's do it offer declines <laughs> oh, they don't want your inventory <laughs> all right um yeah let me go ahead and do a screen share let me let's see that out of there and all right we're going to show our sales highlights of the week oh she says she had uh she has an update video up it was a super rare thing the doctor said she had a better chance of winning the lottery than this happening you know why couldn't it have been the lottery yeah right that's Jeez. Lame. Lame. All right. Are we screen sharing? Yeah, it's on. It's okay. It's on our screen right now. All right. All right. All right. right there. So um, these took a little while to sell. Allen Edmonds is a brand that I always pick up. If you want to sell them quickly, you can price them a little lower uh, and you will uh, sell them even faster. But these did sell at that full sale price for $95 free shipping. I had paid about $10 for them. They were, they were in excellent shape, actually. And uh, I shipped them using cubic shipping. I wrapped them in bubble wrap and then did um, the stretch wrap over that. And then they went into a, into a mailer and there they go. And they ship, shipped for $8 and 92 cents. I already got positive feedback. My customer was so happy with the quality and I, uh, he loved them. So that's what yeah. they sold for. Awesome. Uh, so these bands, these uh, Pendleton bands, collab so i was really excited when i got these that were behind the counter at um savers and i got them and i, I sent a picture i actually sent a picture to allison because allison's always sending us uh, pictures of all the pendleton stuff she finds up in alaska and uh so i got these and i was so so excited they were priced at like weren't they only priced at like 20 bucks or something you paid, like that you paid, yeah you paid, you paid like, like 20 or more. i think you paid about 20 but whatever anyway um and Anyway, so I was so excited, and then I got them. And you know when you get really excited about something, you don't really pay very close attention to it. And then you get it home, and you realize it's got some condition issues. <sighs> That's what happened with these. Um, so if you look, see how it's got the, uh, see where it's kind of got. Mm -hmm. Some rub marks. Some, moth, well, no, it's, moth it might something. be moth holes or something like that. Anyway, so I did not price them as high as I would have if they didn't have those. Um, but I ended up. Um, taking an offer for $65 because so I needed a sale. The condition stuff's a real issue. I took 65 bucks, so I made money on them. I didn't make the magical amount of money that I was hoping I was going to make on them, but that's okay. They're still cool shoes. Darlene, it's not blurry here on our end. Uh, generally, if you're seeing something that's blurry, you need to either refresh your screen mm -hmm. or uh, change your resolution down at the bottom of your screen. Yeah, there's a spot where you can change it um, so it's not like if your computer's trying to show high def and it's not coming through with a good enough signal, you have to bump it down to 720. Anyway. All right, next one for you. Uh, so this is one that actually was kind of a fun, now those are blurry pictures actually, those are probably blurry. Anyway, uh, these, this has actually sold three times, three times. First time customer didn't like it. They returned it because they said it had loose threads inside the sweater. It's a handmade sweater. They all have loose threads inside. That's just the way that it looks on the inside like mm -hmm. that. Uh, yeah. So I was like, all right, lady, whatever. So it sold for all 40, right, lady. It sold for $45 the first time and came back. I relisted it. It sold the second time it came back. This buyer didn't really like the way it fit on them. All right, that's fine came back. I relisted it. It sold overnight and it hadn't even, my sale hadn't caught up to it yet. And so it sold for $80 plus shipping and went to France. So nice. Uh, third time's the charm. Hopefully I'm assuming the France mm -hmm. will not return because I very rarely get international returns on anything. Yeah. Um, Kara, Kara wants to know how come Vans and Pendleton works, but not Cole Han and Nike. So the Vans and Pendleton are legitimate collaborations with both brands on the tags. I don't know so what the problem. I know, but I don't know what the problem with Cole Hot. There is nothing wrong if you have a collaboration and there's two different brands on the item with with putting them on there. I don't know why Cole Hahn and Nike. that's an eBay issue. They're just they've always had that issue where they where they they conflict. Uh, even though they technically are Nike Air Cole Hahn mm -hmm. uh, shoes. 
Um, I don't know what the issue is. It's something they need to fix on their end, but they're probably never going to do it since it's been doing that for years. It's been giving you an error message. Yeah, it's obnoxious. Uh, yeah, that's, it, that's their problem. That, that Technically speaking, there is when something is an, a legitimate collaboration, you should be able to use those two words mm -hmm. in a title all day long. Well, and there's been times when I've had issues with um, having Jordan and Nike together when it's like, I know they're separate now, but they weren't in the beginning. Um, so it's just weird. So, all right. Next one for me, uh, this isn't a huge sale, but it's just kind of, it's another one of those items that like when I got it, you know, I always, whenever I go thrifting, sourcing, um, I come home and then I go through and I, I basically force Vicky to sit down and look at all the stuff as I show it to her. I do get show and tell every time. Mm -hmm. But she likes to do show and tell to me too. It's just with mine, she has to watch, look at like a uh, hundred t-shirts of t-shirts. And so with the description. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And so this was one of the ones that made her roll her eyes and kind of go, really? Come on. Cause it's just like an old tank top. And I think that, you know, people talk a lot about t-shirts, but tank tops don't get as much love. Um, but I only had this for, I don't know, a month tops and I sold it for $35 and I just liked it because of the, the, the graphic on the front of it. I thought it was cool. And I thought somebody's somebody that's into vintage and maybe wants to have a cool workout tank top will <laughs> buy it. And they did it for $35 guys. And, and paid, technically you paid like a buck or two. I'm I paid sure. a couple bucks. For yeah. It. Yeah. Not a big deal. So next one for you. Uh, so I did talk about these. I actually have three of these. I purchased uh, for $10 a piece at a garage sale. These are new old stock vintage uh, sleeping bags. And I did charge shipping on these because they are huge. And right now they're not uh, affected by the, um, by the dimensional weights, but they will be. Mm -hmm. uh, and anyway, I, <clears throat> I sold this one. I took an offer because of where it was going. I'm charging $50 shipping. Uh, and I took an offer and this photo, these photos are outside in front of my garage because they're big and heavy and certainly I'm not bringing it in and trying to stage photos. It's a sleeping bag. Um, so I took an offer for $130. I paid $10. They paid 50 in shipping. It only cost me 30 in shipping. Mm -hmm. So because it was going to Washington. Nice. And uh, I was able to ship it actually priority mail. Uh, because it was only going to Washington, which is only you know two states up from us, uh, it the shipping was not very expensive. You only paid ten bucks for it, mm -hmm. and you're going to be like, do you have any watchers on this? Yeah, I have a bunch of watchers on the other ones. So you got to like get out. Some I'm going to try to get them out before the dimensional weight takes mm -hmm. over in the next couple weeks. Yeah, for sure. Um, Allison, I didn't know Allison was going to make it back in time. She's been away um, camping out in the wilderness and whatnot, whatever they do up in Alaska. Uh, so she's actually here. Apparently she's dirty, smelly and trying to back in, um, her trailer as she listens. All right. You know what I think would be fun? I think it'd be like a good reality show. It would just be you trying to back a trailer up. That would not be good. <laughs> that would not be funny for anybody but you. Uh, I, I, I disagree. I think other people would find it amusing as well. Um, okay. Next one I have is this awesome t-shirt. I remember this. I've had it for a while. It's a weird one because it is, it's like a Terminator t-shirt, but it's not actually a Terminator t-shirt, um, but it's like a 90s high school t-shirt and it's like uh, supposed to be against drugs, like the Terminator. Like Dare, yeah, Terminator he, against drugs. He t Tigers terminate drugs. Hasta la vista, baby. And so I just thought it was an awesome shirt. I didn't know if it, it was going to have a hard time like finding the right buyer. Um, but I did end up taking uh, an offer for $40. I thought that was a, a decent price to get. And look, he's like some sort of, he's supposed to be a tiger, but I don't know what's happening with his ears there. Um, or that's supposed to be like his, I don't know. It looks weird. Um, anyway, but I thought the shirt I think was that's supposed to be part of his head. It's yeah, I think so too. Badly drawn. <laughs> I think so too. But I love it. I think it's an awesome t shirt. So I'm glad that somebody's finally um, gotten it. So 40 bucks for a t shirt. I'll take it. For All sure. Right, next one for you. Uh, so I picked this up at, um, when I did a, uh, storage locker clean out. So it was exactly two weeks ago. I listed it this week and this sold, I took an offer for $80 and I paid about $15, 15 or $20 by break it down based on the number of items that I purchased from this uh, storage locker. Uh, it sold pretty quickly. I did charge for shipping. And like I said, I took an offer for 80. Mm hmm and I don't know why it says it sold for one oh nine ninety five, but it didn't. It I did take an offer. Yeah. Well, they always say that like that. Um, so Go Dog Go said, "Can you put the sleeping bag in a jumbo space bag and, 
and re-box it under dimensions. No, but those old ones, there's no way you'd be able to like. No, uh, here's the thing. It's it's a really, really big sleeping bag, and it's also in its uh, original box. So it's there's no yeah. way to make it much smaller than that. So And they're not um, like those newer sleeping bags where you can like squish them down. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. You can do it with some things, but not with not with those. Mm -mm. All right. Um, next one for me is the sweatshirt. I think I got this at Buffalo Exchange. I thought it was going to sell for more. And then when I, it was one of those ones where I got it home. It's not vintage, but it's uh, Adidas Originals. Um, I When I got, I didn't look at comps. And then when I got home and actually looked it up, I saw there were quite a few out there. Um, so I did end up taking an offer for $60 on this, um, which, you know, I think I paid like 18 or something like that. So not a huge um, sale. But uh, again, it's one of those things like my sales were slow. And when I, when my sales are a little bit slower, if I get any offers that are reasonable, I will go ahead and take them because it's like I kind of want to get things moving. I feel like I got to get those, get those sales coming in. Um, but, you know, still a decent sale. What would you say you sold it for? 60. 60. Okay. Yeah. All right. Next one for you. Uh, okay. So this one I had picked up at a garage sale maybe about four months or so ago. I paid $20 for it. And uh, it was a, it was a high end <clears throat> uh, mixer and I was charging shipping, not a ton of shipping. Uh, so I did actually I lost ship money on shipping on this one. I charged twenty five dollars shipping and it cost me thirty five because the person that purchased it was in Massachusetts and this was fairly heavy. But I took an offer for one hundred and fifty dollars on this and I paid mm -hmm. twenty for it. Not to so shabby. I knew I was probably going to eat a little bit on shipping, which is what I'm doing sometimes with these flat shipping charges. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I make a little, sometimes I lose a little. Yeah. All right. This t-shirt, I love, well, I'd say I love uh, ski t-shirts, but I also love like all the surfing ones. So anything that's like winter sports, summer sports, all that kind of stuff. They're just kind of fun. Um, this one, I believe I got this at Buffalo Exchange. And I think I paid like $12 for it. And again, moving the sales along, I took an offer for $40. Uh, but this is just like a super awesome, like late 80s, mid mid late 80s. I like that neon. That's that's every bit like an 80s. Yeah. Well, this is like the, the 80s Hanes t uh, tag. Um, but I, I was surprised this didn't go sooner. But 40 bucks. Um, 40 bucks is 40 bucks. 40 bucks is 40 bucks, guys. Yeah, with the with the stuff that I buy from Buffalo, I don't like to sell them for less than forty dollars because I'm like I'm I'm really paying up for them for a used T-shirt, paying twelve bucks. And you're you're taking the time to actually source to get your discount. You're you're putting a lot of work into getting what you have. I am well, yeah. I mean, to a certain degree. But the thing is, I'm already like when I go to like Savers to get T-shirts, I'm not going to Savers just to get T-shirts for Buffalo Exchange. I'm going to get them for myself too. So I would already be doing that. So I wouldn't say I put a lot of extra time into them, but it's more about the money I'm putting in. So I need to be able to uh, sell it for a better price. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. I think I talked about this one either last week or the week before. I had picked this up for ten dollars. Um, I got a lot of interest in it right away. This is a great brand. You always want to try to uh, to pick it up when you find it, if you can get it at a decent price. I did take an offer on this. I sold it. I had a lot of interest right away, and it was listed for less than a week. I sold it for $120. I did take an offer because it did have a little spot. If yeah, you look it. at that fourth photo, honestly, it's a tiny spot. It's like a little bit of color loss. I don't know if somebody mm -hmm. dropped a bit of bleach on it or what have you, bumped up against something. It is a very small spot around the waistline, uh, but because of that, I did take I did take the offer on it. Mm -hmm. That brand, I'd never heard of it until a few weeks ago, and now I've heard it like four times. Yeah, I sold another one last night. Yeah, ridiculous. All right, next one for me. So this is one of my bigger sales. Uh, this is, it's just, this brand Codet, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right. Um, it's just uh, like a hunting jacket. It's not like an awesome brand like, um, you know, like Woolrich or, uh, you know, Pendleton or some of these other ones, where, or Filson, where you're going to like get tons of dollars for it. But just the style alone, this old uh, wool, this is like a Mackinac, um, like hunting jacket, it's still going to be able to, to bring some money in. I did end up taking an offer for $95. So again, I'm like, if you give me a reasonable offer when I'm like hurting for sales, I'm going to go ahead and accept it. So 95 bucks, I think I paid less than $10 for it. I maybe paid like $8 for it. I got it at a, um, at a Savers. 
And, uh, but yeah, this, this Buffalo plaid, uh, Lorna found a really nice, um, Buffalo plaid flannel shirt when she was here too. That red Buffalo plaid is really, really popular. So, um, she's a nice jacket. All right. Apparently Allison, something, something, she doesn't even know what kind of animal apparently has peed on her Carhartt jacket. That's very sad. That's gross. <laughs> That's gross. All mm -hmm. right, go ahead. Um, okay, so I showed this either last week or the week before again. I think it was the same week that I showed the Masuk. This was listed for just a couple of days. I took an offer on this for $140. I paid $2 at a garage sale. It was listed for maybe 48 hours. Mm -hmm. And it rolled into my sale. Uh, generally, I don't put stuff on sale right away. But I had forgotten to check off don't add new list, newly listed items. I usually let them go for a few days uh and before they roll into a sale uh, but anyway it ended up going into the sale so i did take an offer for 140 dollars. that is on the high end of what those type of trifold wallets have sold for checkbook wallets have sold for so mm -hmm. i was happy with that and it's navy blue not black black is much more popular because it goes with everything yeah navy is not as popular mm -hmm. but two bucks into 140 bucks i'm okay with that yeah gucci is really huge right now um Somebody said something. Uh, They're talking about trying to get smoke out of it. So Jen was saying, what would happen if, to a leather jacket if I washed it in a cold, gentle cycle or soaked? I got to tell you, there's been a couple of times where because of the condition of something was so, I guess, bad or whatever, that it was worth doing it. I've, I've done it. I've, I put a leather jacket in the washing machine and it's turned out okay. I wouldn't, if it was one of those things where it's like, you kind of have to decide, is it worth the risk to potentially completely ruin an item? Um, and if it is, because if it comes clean, then it's going to actually be valuable, then go for it. If it's not worth the risk, then don't do it, is what I would say. So you never know. Um, <laughs> Allison, thing. I think Casey peed on it, marking your territory. I'll let it go. Uh, I, I, you know what? It's all about picking your battles. That's how relationships uh, work. Jasa, did I have to get it authenticated? No, no. I can tell when something is 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 real or fake mm -hmm. i don't need to authenticate anything she authenticated um, it with her eyeballs <laughs> apparently yeah you just do a little bit of research once you once you understand uh high-end brands you're going to know whether something is real or not and you just need to know i've never had an issue with having anything authenticated the only time i ever had anything authenticated was about 10 years ago when i picked up a couple of um uh chanel bags at an estate sale and they just felt really good to me, but I was in my mind thinking that there's no way they could be real because I think I'd paid like $5 a piece for them. And uh, and I'm pretty sure the people at the estate sale thought they were fakes too, or they wouldn't have priced them at $5, but they something about them told me that they were probably real and I paid to have them authenticated and I sold them each for over 300 a piece. Nice. Uh, but that was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to jump over into my Etsy sales. Uh, you know, I don't buy a lot of, um, of Disney stuff. It really just depends. Uh, but I did pick up this Minnie Mouse t-shirt because uh, I just thought it was a unique enough. Because you know, there's like the Minnie Mouse ones that you kind of see the same ones over and over and over again. Yeah. Uh, but this one I thought was really cute and, and kind of unique. And so I went ahead and picked it up. And uh, I've had it listed for like, maybe a month i don't think it's been up that long um and let's go ahead and look at flipper tools and see what it sold for and so 47.99 i actually don't think this one actually didn't sell for 47.99 it sold for like 40 something you had a coupon because i have the whole thing set up uh where it sends out a 15 percent off coupon to people who um who visit my visit like my listings and favorite my listings and stuff or whatever in Etsy. And it doesn't ha work a whole, like all the time, but just every once in a while, randomly I'll get a sale and it'll say they had a discount and I'll, that's the only way they would get a discount. Um, and so that actually sold for like $40 and change, but um, I was happy with that sale. Um, all right. Next one for you. Ooh, this is a good one. Uh, Jen was saying back in the day, eBay used to suspend you quick for a listing. Yeah, back when uh, Louis Vuitton and Gucci were like you could buy them all on Canal Street and they were just really, really bad. I mean, they're still out there, obviously, all the really bad fakes. Mm -hmm. uh, I've sold authentic Elt Louis and authentic Gucci before, but I've always been a power seller. I've been a power seller since that term existed. So I've never really had a. I feel like you're really about bragging it. about it right now. No, I'm just saying I've been power seller hasn't been a thing forever, but it's. 
It's so, been around for I got whatever. people throwing your weight around here. It's just, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> sure. All right, what's this? <sighs> so I showed this in a haul. I had actually, uh, this is where I always tell people, buy things that you're not familiar with. Um, get, get familiar with things that, you know, you don't know about. This is not something I knew anything about. I picked this up when I was out thrifting one day at, um, I know I showed this in a haul at one point. I can't remember mm -hmm. how long ago, but it probably at least six months, maybe longer. Uh, but I picked this up for about four or five dollars. It was in the housewares department with a bunch of like where, where plaques were. I picked up at like Savers and um, I took an offer on this and I sold it for one hundred and fifty dollars. Um, but it's been sitting for about six months. Once I looked it up and realized what they sell for, I was like, oh, hey, that was a nice uh, a nice thing. But it's not this. It's it's I don't know. I must have put the measurement somewhere in the listing but it's only like six by five or something like that it's not really big okay yeah eight eight and a half by five eight by five um but yeah it's just this weird plaque that's like this painted stuff on copper oh chris says she thinks it was when she was visiting i think it might have been it was it was when someone was here was somebody was thrifting with us i don't know if it was lorna or if it was chris or if it was we were it was when we were in um Arizona, but I know that we had a third party with us that we were talking about it. What about it this? Because you said buy stuff that you don't know about. What about it made it, you want it, to pick first? It up? Okay, so when I picked it up, I first I opened the box. It was closed in the box and it had a price tag on it. And then, yeah, I think it was you, Chris. And then it had, um, you know, it just had heft to it. So it was like I just looked it up when mm -hmm. I had it in my hand. Well, and it had like this little number on it. Yeah, so that it just, looked like it, it was had, something valuable. It looked like something. Yeah. But it wasn't really big. So, it, you know, apparently to the people at Savers, it didn't look like much because I didn't pay much for it. Yeah. All right. Next one for me. Uh, speaking of um, Jesus T-shirts, Christian T-shirts. So, so, you know, I've got my things that I like. I like my ski and stuff. Um, but I also have been talking a lot about how you can sell vintage religious T-shirts because, uh, you know, those trends aren't just for secular stuff. And so people who are super, um, you know, maybe it's somebody who's like involved in a youth group or just whatever, they're just really into church or Jesus or whatever. Uh, they, there's still the same, the same trends still apply. So like the whole vintage t-shirt thing. So this one actually, uh, you know, it didn't sell, it, I think it's just like a $30 t-shirt. In fact, I'll go ahead and look real quick, but, um, what was awesome about it is I paid like a couple bucks for it, sold it for $30, but I sold it to a buyer in Australia. So I didn't have to pay shipping. They paid shipping. So had I sold it um, locally, I would have, I would have had to, I would have maybe made 25 bucks on it. It went to Australia. They paid shipping. They paid like 2350 for shipping. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually made more like closer to probably $40 on it. Once you figure in that I didn't have to pay for shipping and everything, but it's just too blessed to stress. The other side says Word of Life Christian Center. Um, so yeah, just a goofy Christian t-shirt. Nothing special, but somebody wanted it. You're shaking your head because you just can't believe it, can I, you? Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't understand some of these t-shirts that sell because I want to know who the people are that buy them. Yeah. Uh, so this, what makes this vintage is, so first of all, if you look at the tag, so it says USA made components assembled in Mexico. That generally me is going to mean um, mid to late 90s. Sometimes it can mean early 2000s, but um, you generally with Mexico, it's usually late 90s. So I would I would guess this is probably like 98, 97, 98, 99 at the latest. Um, but yeah, that's a it's a 90s vintage T-shirt. All right, go ahead for you. Uh, so this is one Ooh, that yeah. I picked up. Um, this one I've had for a little while and I priced it high because there's a lot of these that are remakes um, that are that are currently being made and things like that. But this is one that I picked up for two dollars at a garage sale. And uh, this is dead stock. This is this is, you know, you used to go and get T-shirts and you'd have an iron on done or you'd buy the iron on your iron on yourself at home. This was a true vintage shirt that was probably late 70s, early 80s. Yeah, this tag um, is probably late 70s. And I find it's I sat on it for a while because I knew that I was going to I was not going to budge much on this price. So it finally sold for sixty five dollars, but it's going to somewhere in uh, Spain. So they paid twenty five dollars shipping as nice. well. That is awesome. Um, yeah, I think I was with you when you got this T-shirt and I was super jealous. 
I think you got the, your 3D Harley shirt at the same sale. It was that guy. Oh, okay. John's nice. garage sale. The first time we went. Love it. Love it. All right, my next one. Uh, so this is one where I've, I've actually sold a few things this last week. I sold a pair of jeans. I sold a pair of shorts. And I sold this. A few things that like I wouldn't even buy now. Not because they don't sell, but just because I don't sell this kind of stuff as much anymore. Um, I just don't go after this stuff much. Um, but this is just like a really nice wool overcoat, vintage wool overcoat uh, with a herringbone um, kind of pattern in it. Uh, it's just like a really cool... Um, it's got the with these the leather wrapped buttons. Um, so this is probably actually more seventies. I was right? just gonna say that that's leather wrapped is more seventies than sixties. So I think, um, I think you made an error. Yeah, your whatever. There. The person still bought it. Um, it's not like it makes that much of a difference. But no. um, anyway, it's just a really nice. Um, you can take the you can actually take the furry faux fur collar off. Um, but it's just like a really nice uh, overcoat. And yeah, so I've had this. I mean, I probably got this like. A couple of years ago because it was definitely back in oregon i have not bought anything like this here um but let's see let me tell you when my sales are not doing doing so great i will take it wherever i can get it um and i sold this one for a hundred dollars um it went ooh, locally ooh. but you know what was awesome is it went to california so guess what it went for like it Seven shipped for change. like eight dollars because yeah. it was pretty big um and heavy but it barely cost anything because of that so i love it when i sell something to california um all right, next one for you. So this was my one and only sale on Etsy this week, but it was a pretty good one. Um, it it was uh, something that they someone had asked me a question about, and I sold it on Monday, shipped it on Monday. They wanted to know if I could ship it out fast, and uh, this is one that I think I paid two or three dollars for at a garage sale, but it was kind of grungy looking, and so I went and had it dry cleaned. I don't have everything dry cleaned, but I knew that I wanted to have this one done, and this cost our dry cleaner is two dollars and 25 cents so uh it's usually worth it to have things dry cleaned if you get it cheap enough and you think you're going to sell it well enough so uh i, I love planes i love the gaudy over the top 80s yep it's so cute it's weird right Let's just let you see what your uh i wanted to see what your keywords were anyway all right let's see what it says I don't usually use the keyword section. Uh, you, Dana does sometimes. Sometimes. She makes, well, she makes the she does the listings for me. I love doing the keywords. Um, eighty-four ninety-five. Sold for eighty-four ninety-five. Nice. All right, my last one I sold. Uh, so this, you know, what I might have gotten this in. Did I get this, Teresa? Did I get the Snapple jacket in Phoenix? I feel like I did. I feel like I might have. Um, but this is just a, a Snapple, uh, 90s Snapple kind of um, varsity bomber style jacket. And mm -hmm. I like to buy stuff like this. Um, and, you know, it's funny because when you go look at comps, this is another, I feel like the, these kinds of jackets always get undersold. And most of the comps, um, I think, were relatively lower. I remember you talking about that. You showed this in a haul. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I, you know, I, you know me. I like to ignore the comps because uh, that's just the way I roll. Uh, so let's go ahead and see what it sold for. So Teresa's like, I'm sure. Yeah, you got it here. She's like, she doesn't remember where you got your stuff. You remember? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Anyway, um, I'm pretty positive I got it in Phoenix, but I sold it for a hundred bucks. And that was even with that little flaw in the back collar right there. And I'm pretty sure like when I went and looked at comps, they, you know, there were multiples that had sold for like 40 bucks, maybe 50 bucks. Um, but I sold it for a uh, hundred dollars. So yeah, so I had like three items this week that I sold for about a hundred dollars. <sighs> it was a little sad, a little sad guys, a little sad. All right, Ooh. I'm going to go ahead and take us out of the screen share here and uh oh wait we've got big fish in the house what, what? derek yamamoto what <laughs> <You're funny. laughs> well he likes it when we make a big deal about him coming on right um anyway yeah chris says if you ask 40 you get 40. it's true <laughs> uh all, all right. right so 249 we're just about to start getting into the hall part now yeah now this is so, where things get real good guys and for those of you who felt a little bit ripped off because I did all the teasing on yesterday's, uh, this week's sourcing video. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, it's all going to pay off now. Okay. So if you care about, um, vintage streetwear or just streetwear in general, 
I think you're going to like some of the stuff that I found this week. Uh, I got a lot of fun stuff. So, and you got some great hard goods, clothes as well. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right. So who's starting? We're going to keep this going. Keep this going. We can go ahead and start. Um, Don, you want me to keep an eye out for cats? You know, I haven't seen any cats t-shirts, but I will definitely keep an eye out. I feel like, uh, Phantom of the Opera and Les Miserables, those are the ones that you see more often. Actually, Phantom of the Opera are the ones that you really see a lot, but I haven't seen any cats ones. Um, All right, I guess I'll start with, I picked up, I did pick up quite a few pairs of shoes this week, uh, but I'm just gonna show you some of the highlights here. So um, I was able to pick up uh, a couple pairs of, this is one pair of like Carl uh, Lagerfeld, uh, you know, he just passed away, uh, designer shoes. I paid, the tag's still there, $12.99, so it's 25% off day. Uh, so I paid, you know, just under $10 for these. And they're in excellent shape. Mm -hmm. um, just I like the, how they left the sale tags on from when I know. originally bought them. So I it's know. like all worn away, but it's 40% um, off. But, you know, they're really nice leather ballet flats. They're in a smaller size. I think they're like a size six or something like that. But uh, I'll probably sell these for about 60 to 75 bucks. And let's see. Oh, okay. by the way, I did. I said it in our. Uh, I, I said it in a comment earlier today. Um, but we were with Lorna. We went to twelve different thrift stores. Yeah, we went to twelve this week. That's a lot. That's yeah. a lot. That's a lot. And okay, so I picked up another pair. So uh, same size. So I think that there were actually three pair. And one of them was not in great shape. So I only picked up two of them. These are just a gold leather, uh, kind of like a bronze gold pointy toe slip mm -hmm. on loafer same price again i think i'll sell these these might go a little bit higher uh because they're more of a rare uh color great shape mm -hmm. uh they both have the little kl in the back if you can see that they've got a little nice. medallion in the back <laughs> barry cat t-shirts are so 2018. listen i actually i would i would agree with that i'm a little over the uh the silly cat t-shirts for the most part other than the couple of mine that are my favorites uh, but we're talking about Cats the Musical, man. And that's, that shit's timeless, okay? But oh, jeez, could your voice get a little higher there? Jeez. <sighs> All right. Okay, so this is another pair. These, I, these are my favorite that I picked up this week. Look at these fantastic 80s boots right here. Those are nice. These are silver lame. Uh, they are leather. And then they have this weird brushed black abstract thing in the middle oh, wow. and they're freaking fantastic right they're kind of a bigger size i think they were a size 10 so maybe i could get a little small drag queen in these but <laughs> i love them uh i paid six dollars for these i did get that i got them at deseret they're dead stock if you look there there's no they've not been worn um and i think i have them priced around a hundred dollars or so Those are and I, I think i'll get close to that Super fancy. Uh, let's see. In that same vein, I'll do one more, uh, like kind of a hard good type of thing. I picked this up the other day at <clears throat> one of the uh, one of the savers, and I paid around five dollars for it. It looks like Vera Bradley, right? So it kind of looks like that. This the you know the old lady purses with the quilting on them that everybody seems to like. They do sell well still. Some of them, some patterns. Uh, but it's not Vera Bradley. I picked it up because I could tell it was like really solid and well made. And I had never heard of this brand before. So it's called, you can see I'm old. See how far away I'm holding it? You need me to hold it over here? Yeah. Donna Sharp. I don't know if anyone else had ever heard of that brand before or not. But uh, it does sell the way Vera Bradley used to sell. Uh, this I think I can probably get about $50 or $60 for uh, for this bag. It's in really good shape. Nice. And okay, you can go. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna actually start with something that is women's, which I almost never, never buy. What? Generally, I won't buy it. It depends on what it is. Um, anyway, I went to Buffalo Exchange. I actually, if you watch the video, the sourcing video, because we've been going to so many stores, I ended up just dropping off the girls at um, one of the savers that's right by um, Buffalo Exchange, went in there, did the best ever got over $140 in credit and I had gotten all the stuff I was going to get and pretty much had used up all of my credit. And then as I was checking out, I saw these magical things up on the um, shelf up front and these are brand new, brand new Doc Martin boots. Um, but look at this, look at that. Awesome. They got like a little, a little furry, um, heart, heart, upside, leopard down, heart. upside down, leopard, leopard print heart. 
Uh, but these are just awesome. They're so, I think they're gorgeous. Um, and really they're no different than like the men's boots. And they're also um, like the wingtip. They've got the, the wingtip kind of broke thing going on. And so uh, they were $50, which definitely was paying up, but these are like $150 boots. Um, and, you know, Doc Martens generally have a really, really good resale value, especially, I just hit myself in the face. You're gonna have, somebody's gonna have to freeze um, that frame and like post it somewhere, me getting hit in my eyeball. Anyway, uh, Doc Martens have great resale value. Um, and uh, yeah, they're size eight size eight women's uh if they would have been a little smaller i think um uh what's her name uh dana dana would have been all over these because these are oh yeah of course the pictures i already have these listed again i said whenever i get stuff that's a little higher value that I put a little bit more money into i get that stuff listed asap mm -hmm. and so these were listed um these were like listed on i think friday or something like that i listed them right away um, so those are really nice. <laughs> Dana says, you're totally lucky those aren't my size. You know what, Dana, if they had been my size or your size, I would have been like, okay, let's work on a trade. And I would have like traded them for doggy sitting or something like that. So it would have been okay if they were your size. Oh yeah. They're not counterfeit. Here's the thing. Uh, go dog, go. It's real easy to tell the difference between real docs and fake docs. It's real easy. Yeah. It's not like some handbags or certain things. They're not well counterfeited. Let's put it yeah. that way. Actually, most stuff, it, most counterfeit stuff, you can generally figure it out. Like North Face, you know it's counterfeit. Mm -hmm. I can count, I can spot. You can tell by stitching, Nike, by labels. Yeah. When stuff is counterfeit, you're generally not going to get. Uh, the quality's not going to be there. The quality's not there, but it's also the labels are not going to be correct. The style names and numbers mm -hmm. are not going to be correct. They're not going to match yep. up, all that kind of stuff. This has the style in it. They're called Bentley 2 Heart. Um, you can see that right here. And so, and then when you look it up, it matches. A lot of times with like shoes, when they're counterfeit, they won't have the correct, like she said, they won't, they're not going to, they're not going to counterfeit an exact style like and this. Label. They might counterfeit the a classic mm -hmm. the classic standard doc martin boot and then the, still the quality is not going to be there so. yeah the stitching's all crooked it's jacked up looking i've mm -hmm. i've picked up a pair of counterfeit docs once they were yeah. tall they were um like a, a, the ones that go up to right under your knees the really tall ones that sell mm -hmm. for a lot i think i still sold them but not as docs yeah i'll tell you here's a little tip if you're whether it's like adidas or nike or anything anytime there's something that has embroidery um like a team name or whatever anything that's embroidered or like the brand north face if you can see the thread connecting the letters um it, it's probably counterfeit mm -hmm. because they the quality they're not gonna they're never gonna embroider something and then have threads connecting letters they're just not um and that's gonna be something that can jump out real quick where you're like ah oh, that looks a little shoddy um all right i'm gonna show some t-shirts real quick I went, uh, I've been looking in the women's section more for, for vintage t-shirts because I find that depending on the color, a lot of times, um, it just automatically gets put in the women's. Um, and so you'll find like purple and pink and blue. It's just kind of weird, but this one, uh, so when we were at Deseret Industries, um, this was the one I found that I loved. I think it's pretty funny. Life without deaths would be a mistake. <laughs> Very dramatic. Well, look at it. I love it. I love this shirt. I think it's great. Uh, but I found that Deseret. Because Deseret, I never find good vintage t-shirts there. But apparently, I just need to look at the women's section. And that's where I'll find them all. That's when I found it. Savers. I actually grabbed it and asked her if she wanted it. It was in the women's section. This one definitely is. Was made for women. Uh, but I just couldn't pass it up, guys. Um, check it out. It says 50-something. If you recognize the font, that's because this is actually uh, a legit 30 something um, item and it's new for those of us that are old enough to remember that TV show. Yeah. Look, 1988, this is the show 30 something. So it was just, you know, so I guess, I guess if you're a fan and you're in your fifties, you're supposed to like buy this. It's like a sleep shirt. Cause it's a one size fits all. Normally I don't buy women's stuff, but I just couldn't pass it up cause it was cheap. It was only a couple of bucks. It's got, I love these, uh, when they do a style where the two tone roll, the two tone sleeves. roll up sleeve. Um, I figured, you know, it's worth getting and selling. It's actually more like a Alexis, <laughs> I'm so old. Yeah. I remember the show too. Of course, I was only 12 when the show was on, but I remember it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's more like a, a 2XL because it's like it, the way the measurements um, turn out. So I think it's a cool shirt. I like it. Um, all right. Let me do two more shirts. 
so I got my my guy in Pennsylvania who sends me boxes every week. And this week, this one over here can attest to it. This week, the box was a winner. It was a big winner. There were a lot of pieces in it where I was like, what? And this is definitely one. This might be the number one piece in that whole box. Um, this is a Magic the Gathering t-shirt. Um, so for those nerds out there who are in the know, uh, Magic the Gathering is a, is a super nerdy card game played by kids who like Dungeons and Dragons and stuff like that. It's just like role-playing kind of game. And this one is a vintage 1998. It actually has one of the cards on it. I've never played the game, so I'm not familiar with all the different cards, but this is one of the playing cards. Um, and this is from 1998. And uh, I, I haven't found any comps for this exact t-shirt uh, because it's so specific, but I found plenty of magic uh, t-shirts to sell for $100 and above. I would guess I should be able to get about 100 bucks for this. It's a nice single stitch uh, vintage 1998 Magic the Gathering t-shirt. Um, so I was super excited when I saw that. And then no, Sandy, it's not a dirty game. It's just, it's a role, not that kind of role. Playing. Not that kind of role playing. It's like Dungeons like, and that's Dragons. Why I said Dungeons and Dragons. Cause it's, it's, most people are familiar with Dungeons and Dragons. It's most similar to that. It's most similar to that. Um, but it's, you know, there's a lot of people who are super into, it. I think your daughter really likes to play mm -hmm. the game and stuff like that. It's just one of those games where there's lots of cards involved. Again, I've never played, so I don't really know how it works. Um, but yeah. Anyway, so real quick, Christian t-shirts. This one's awesome. So this came in that box too from my guy. Uh, this is cool because it's like a Harley Davidson t-shirt, but it's holy, dis holy discipline in Christ. So it's meant to look like a Harley t-shirt, but it's a, it's a Christian one. It's an HD. Mm -hmm, it's got the HD. Uh, but this is a vintage 90s single stitch, really cool shirt. Actually, we have friends who are, uh, who are bikers and also hardcore Christians. If this was a little bit bigger, like our, our friend Nick, he'd probably be. He would love that. He'd be a totally into it. Actually, how big is it? I don't think he's pretty big. He's probably need it's an XL. XL. He'd probably, probably need a two XL. XL. He'd be busting out of this. Um, but Harley's really popular, and like I said, the Christian T-shirt. So this is a nice little little crossover Harley Christian super awesome T-shirt. So uh, I was excited to get that one as well. So back to you, back Madame. to them. All right, I'm telling you guys, it's only going to get better from here. So just hang on to your seats. I see a few people have left. Well, you know what? It's their loss. Oh, well. Their loss, guys. It's only going to get better. One person angrily th gave a thumbs down. On their way off. Out. I'm taking my ball. <laughs> going home. <laughs> All right. So I've showed this guy before. I picked up uh, a little this guy in a different outfit before. This creepy little uh, rubber face doll with the cigar hanging out of his face. Mm -hmm. This is made by Rushton. It's kind of Rushton is a, they made it in the sixties. He's kind of made He's meant to look like a hobo. He's got like holes in his clothes. That's intentional. Um, and he's got a cigar hanging out of his mouth and I did not pay $20. Actually, I paid $2 for him and he is probably going to sell the last one I had sold for $80 and I'll probably, some people price them really low and they sell them super low for like 25, 30, $35. The last one sold, for 80 so I'm gonna go for the same amount there's no reason why not to I think it'd be cooler if you had a little bit a little bindle with them yeah probably not though I've never seen one with a bindle I don't what? think he actually comes with one but how cool would it be if he had one you could take off his little handkerchief and get him a stick and make him a little bindle so you no he's around. not injured I don't know is hobo and yeah I I do put hobo you know that a hobo uh a hobo is actually there's like the different distinctions but the hobo is the one that they go on the trains and they would travel for work is usually what a hobo would be. How many thrift stores are in the Vegas area? So we have in the Vegas area, we have Henderson, uh, Las Vegas proper, and then North Las Vegas. There's three cities that all kind of abut mm -hmm. one another. Uh, as far as the number of thrift stores, there are dozens, probably a couple dozen. Yeah, I, I would say for the size of the city, for the population, I actually think we don't have a lot of thrift stores. I think other cities have way more, um, but we have like six savers, We've got uh, a couple of Deseret Industries. We've got, what, like four or five Salvation Armies. We've there's, got, two, there's like two or three Salvation Armies, actually. Okay, but there's, and there's, there's like how many good ten, I don't know, eight or, eight or ten Goodwills. There's quite a few. There's a lot. So I'd say there's probably like plus smaller, lots of smaller ones. Between 20 and 30 tops. Mm, I but I don't think you're counting uh, that. I don't think you're counting like the bins and all the good, uh, all the 
smaller mom and pop. Yes. Yeah, but anyway, there's a lot of them. So yeah, somebody had mentioned earlier that we do have a lot of honey holes. There are thousands and thousands of resellers in this very small area. Um, but yes, we do have a lot of places that we can go and acquire stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's also a very densely populated small area. So there's a yeah. constant amount of stuff coming out. So if you know what to look for, you can find we obviously have plenty of competition in this area, but there's no shortage of the, stuff. The best, that's why Savers, in my opinion, is the best because we have six locations and they are the best of any other thrift store as far as turning over inventory because they are putting out mm -hmm. eight to 10,000 items every single day at every single location. So there are very few th church thrift stores in Vegas, Cara. There may be a couple. There was one that I used to go to that is closed. Um, and then, uh, there are a couple of Plato's closet, uh, Plato sucks out here. Uh, it's mostly a bunch of Abercrombie and Hollister crap for teenagers. That's mm. overpriced. Uh, there's no, no good vintage or, or, uh, good higher priced stuff. So, I mean, I think I've bought one thing out of Plato's closet ever. Uh, it's just not, not even worth walking into, not, not mm. worth the time. Mm -mm. Um, anyway, so, okay. So couple more things that I picked up. I've always talked about blankets. I talk about looking at the, in the linens and blankets and things like that. Vintage blankets are awesome. I love vintage blankets. This I went and grabbed right away because look at this, of course, so it's, it's vintage looking, but it's also, it's plaid. It's a great plaid and it's wool. So immediately I had to go and check, oh, is this Pendleton? Because you know, they have a certain look to them and they do kind of look like this, but no, alas, not Pendleton. It is a brand called uh, Farabo. It did have a tag, which is always great. So this is a, definitely a 50s or 60s tag. Uh, and it is 100% um, wool, vintage, lap blanket. It's not very big. Uh, but I only paid $5 for it. And the brand do, does still sell very well. I'll probably still sell it for about 75 Very nice, so, very nice. And then I want to talk about the thing I think I paid the most for this week. Another thing I talk about is board games. <clears throat> not all board games are worth money and not even most, but board games in general are worth uh, picking up when you can get them at thrift stores because they're usually only two or three bucks a piece. Um, so this game was actually behind the counter. So someone did a little research on this and they had it priced at $40. And we mm -hmm. went in there on, um, you know, 25% off day. So I paid $30 for this game. This is a game that you're not going to run into very frequently, but if you do grab it, it's called the public assistance board game. It was originally, it originally came out in the eighties and then it was reissued in the nineties. Uh, basically, this is one of those games. It was it's super politically incorrect, and it is a bit of a commentary on the sign sign of the times. In the uh, it's a it's a commentary on liberalism in the eighties. Not to get too political, but it was basically uh, created by people that were talking uh, um, about the uh, how bad the welfare system was and how bad public assistance was in general and how, how much the abuse there was in it, whether it's true or not, this is what their commentary was on the game mm -hmm. and I'm not getting political, but that's what that was about. And it was, the production was shut down. It was, it was hugely controversial there. If you look it up a little bit, public assistance board game and read a little bit about the history, it's a little bit interesting. I've never run into one in public before, but I did know of it. Um, Anyway, it, uh, it, it sells very well. So the original one, some people have them priced fairly low, and then some people have them priced high. There's only about 15 or so available for sale. This is not one of the originals. This is a reissue in the 90s. It's two games in one. It is complete. Uh, one is about public assistance, and one is about capital punishment. It has to do with the prison system. Anyway, uh, it's banned like Ghettoopoly was. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You're exactly right. It was the same type of thing as Ghettoopoly, but they sell well. So I paid $30 for it. I think I'm going to sell it for about $125, uh, which I think is really good for a board game. Um, but I'll sit on it. I'll, I'll keep my price at the highest price there, and I'll wait until the other ones sell because there's so few of them. Mm -hmm. So that was my fun find for the week. For me? Yeah. All right. And, yes, it is, it's a bit offensive, and it's a bit, uh, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a, a take on the public system. Um, I mean, it has some merit to it in some regards, but again, it's it's a it's just a political thing. I'm all about if you can make a little bit of money on it. It's not relevant to the today's day and times. It's mm -hmm. 
you know, it's a 30 year old game, but it's a cool game. All right. So uh, this is an interesting t-shirt that I found. Uh, I actually found this at Deseret. Mm -hmm. I swear Deseret, like usually I kind of don't really do that well there. Um, but I found a bunch of really great stuff at one of their locations and I actually found two of these. Um, so for those of you that know, this is the movie that just came out. That is, uh, it's the, um, why is my mind suddenly going blank? The movie Elton, Elton John. John. It's the Elton John movie that just came out. Um, and so this is from the night 2019 global theater tour. And you can see that not all the dates have even happened yet. Um, Cause it goes all the way up until uh, the 23rd of was that August um, in Japan. And so mm -hmm. this is the world, all the dates where um, it is opening all over the world. And so it's just a really cool t-shirt. This is the retro ringer tee. Um, so I got two of these. Um, they've sold for different amounts. I should be able to sell them for like 30, 35 bucks. So they're not like going to go for a huge amount of money, but they're just really cool t-shirts. Oh, that's it? And Deseret, Deseret, uh, well, yeah, because there's a few others out there. Maybe I'll price them a little higher. We'll see. Um, but uh, I love that t-shirt. I thought it would go for more than that. Well, there's other ones out there. So it's like you got to kind of, I mean, it's not. Even with the European dates only? Yeah, that's what, that's all the t-shirt is. Hmm. Um, okay. So, so I'll see. I might price it a little higher. We'll see, guys. We'll see. But it's kind of like right now is when the show, the movie's really hot. So just who knows how much longer it's going to go as far as popularity. So um, you gotta, you gotta jump on it, right? Now this T-shirt, um, I think this is another one that came from my guy, my box this week. Uh, it did. No, no, no. Last, last I got that. Nope. I got this at Deseret. I got this um, thinking I was going to. Oh, that's it. right thinking I was going to take it to uh, Buffalo because I just thought it was just a generic um, motorcycle t-shirt. But then as I was looking closer at it, because I'm like, oh, it's a cool shirt. But, you know, and then I was looking closer and I realized it's for Indian motorcycles. And the thing about Indian motorcycles, you don't see their stuff as much because Harley Davidson just, you know, they they put a lot of stuff They're super commercialized. They're super commercialized. They've been, you know, all the different, um, all the different stores all over the country put out their own t-shirts all over the world put out their own t-shirts. So they're just, there's a lot of them out there. There's a lot of t-shirts out there, but you almost never come across the Indian ones. Um, and so you can see down here, it actually says Century. Um, I don't know if it's V-Twin or Twin V Chief. It's actually a specific bike. Um, so I was like, oh, I better sell this myself because um, there really just aren't a lot of them. So I'm not sure what I'll price it at, but it's just like a really, really cool uh, motorcycle biker t-shirt. Hmm. Uh, this next one, I'm not sure what I'm going to price it at, but this is a Universal Studios t-shirt. And the thing about Universal Studios in general is it's really, this is like one of those things that's like popular in the street, like the vintage t-shirt streetwear world um, is Universal Studios stuff. And then this particular one is cool because it says U.S. Air, the official airline, and that airline doesn't exist anymore. Um, so U.S. Air, uh, it became U.S. It started way earlier, but the, the name U.S. Air started in 1979. I don't know exactly when it stopped being U.S. Air, but then it became U.S. Airways, um, which, which ended in 2015. But at some point, it went from being U.S. Air to U.S. Airways. So, but this T-shirt is a single stitch. Uh, the tag, this is um, the Hanes tag, which is usually 80s. Occasionally, you'll see early 90s. Um, but it's just really cool because it has the U.S. Air on it plus the Universal Studios. So it's just kind of a neat, uh, neat T-shirt. Um, now this last T-shirt. So we went last night to do our wine tasting thing. Mm -hmm. And what's kind of cool about the explosion of vintage streetwear over the last few years, um, and particularly recently with what with the whole Slobby Robbie thing, mm -hmm. um, but vintage streetwear has become been become building in popularity over the last few mm -hmm. years, more mainstream. And so a lot of shops have been opening up, uh, especially in the Vegas area, like a lot of them. And so uh, at this, you know, where, where in Container Park, there were a couple of different shops that had streetwear. And we went into one and I got a couple of things there. Um, you know, most of his prices were pretty spot on. They were like maybe Mostly a, a little bit lower, a little bit lower than what I would charge, but not low enough for me to be able to flip. Um, right, but, and you're selling online to a worldwide market. He was selling to a local, very right. local market. So there were a few things that were worth me picking up, but I only got a couple of things. This is uh, Super Bowl um, 21. So this is 1987 Super Bowl, New York Giants. It's just like a really cool, excellent, excellent condition. Uh, screen stars tag, um, just a really, really nice uh, condition t-shirt. And I had, 
so he had it priced at 25. I think I could sell this for like 60 bucks. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I grabbed that one and then that's, I'm going to do be done. You go okay. do your thing. All right. You're going to be done for the moment. For the moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to start off. This is my last item of hard goods that I picked up this week, but it is my favorite. It is my favorite. If you're on the Instagram, you've already seen it. But this I can uh, thank Lorna for this one because Lorna spotted it before me. See, this <laughs> is what happens when you thrift with three people. Mm -hmm. Some people are going to find stuff before you. She knew she wasn't going to ship this home, nor is it something that she was super interested in. But uh, it, she was behind. Oh, she went around the corner before I did. Um, I paid a whopping. Two dollars. <laughs> Speaking of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Sweet, sweet, sweet Jesus. I paid two dollars. This is a uh, vintage. It's true vintage. Black velvet painted Jesus. Mm -hmm. In a vintage gold uh, gilded kind of frame. And uh, made in Mexico. Pretty two dollars. Two dollars. Well, your voice got real uh, high that time. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm super excited. I'm probably going to, I don't know what I'm going to list them for. There are a bunch of vintage Jesus on velvet paintings. Some are more modern, some are older. There are not that many that are older ones. So I'm kind of, uh, Hallelujah. I don't know where I'm going to put it. I have a feeling it'll probably sell on Etsy, but I'm going to price it pretty high and mm -hmm. hang it on the wall for a bit. Yeah. So we can keep it for a while. What's up, hip flipping mama? Yeah. So I'm super excited about the Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, so I'm going to talk about vintage because I did pick up a lot of vintage stuff this week. So that was my my segue to vintage. Um, let's see. I picked up this fantastic dress. This was very very uh, very 60s, very 70s. This little vintage dress. Uh, I paid eight dollars for this. I'll probably sell it because of the pattern and the style for about 75 or so. Velvet Jesus is a good band name. I'm with you. Uh, do I pick up anything Jesus related? No, not necessarily, but almost anything that is vintage I, and religious, I will pick up. Mm -hmm. um, that was because it was on black velvet. Yeah. How do you know? How do you know it was vintage? Uh, I could tell by the stamp on the back and the made in Mexico and also by the frame. The frame was definitely the same era as the, the painting itself. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, this was my, this is probably my favorite thing. I don't know if uh, Dana is still in there, but in the in the chat or not. But Dana, you're gonna like this. Uh, I picked this one up. I did pay up for it. I'm gonna say I paid twenty dollars for this dress, but I think it is new old stock. It's very noisy. I know. I'm sorry, <laughs> but it is this fantastic yellow, uh, kind of like a bridesmaid vintage '70s it's long really pretty. dress. It's actually gorgeous. If I were a tiny person, I would still, I would wear this. So I think I'm going to, um, I think it's got a big bow on the back and everything, a flower on the back. I, I, think, I think I should sell this for about 150 or so. I love it. Um, do a couple more and then you can get into a few more than you did. Um, again, speaking of loud blazers, vintage loud vintage blazers. I love this one. <clears throat> if this doesn't scream '90s at you, I, I it's certainly certainly screams something at you, this, right? This makes me think of MC Hammer and like, uh, yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Kara, that dress is taffeta, and yes, I definitely would be using the word modest on that, but uh, it's it, because it's long and modest. But it's uh, it is vintage, so in general, a lot of vintage stuff was is modest. But yeah, so this I paid about four dollars for, and this is like crispy linen neon oh. color block. It's freaking heinous, but I love it. Beautiful, but I love it. Beautiful, yeah. Vanilla ice, MC Hammer, like that. Really, it's women's. It's yeah. women's, but uh, padded shoulders and all. I think I'll probably sell this one for about seventy-five or so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Millie Vanilli, there you go. Oh yeah, that was very Millie Vanilli. There you go. It's beautiful. I think if it doesn't scream mm -hmm. 80s or 90s at you, then you aren't old as well. Janet like Jackson 90s. Mm -hmm. Miss Janet, if you're nasty. <laughs> and then, okay, so this was one that Katie found for me, actually. Um, and I love this, too. This is a vintage, eight, uh, this is 90s, too. Late 80s, early 90s. Color block, Jordache with the inset plaid on the sleeves. Where's Allison? We need, need her to identify all the plaid patterns. I know, right? Jordache, trucker jacket. 
so this one was $5. It was 50% off at St. Jude's. That's crazy. $5. This one will probably be like a $60, $65 jacket. It's awesome. And then I do one more, which is pro which is like my other favorite. It's in the 90s today in here in Vegas. Just 90s. Mm -hmm. not, it's not going to hit 100 today. This one I'm going to have to stand up for as well because this is a new old stock. This has the tags on it still. This is a, a vintage... Halston dress. I don't know if the fabric is even coming through on there, but it's got these like bat wings, this chiffon layer, like angel angel sleeves. They call these. Um. Anyway, it's this like turquoise, this pale turquoise color, mm -hmm. and it is Halston. So going to be late this is very late 70s might be as early as like or as as new as like 80 to 81 82 even hmm. so i paid around ten dollars for this again this one is halston it's designer Fancy. i'm probably going to list this one for about 200 bride of dracula all right my turn. Oh, it is very bride of dracula that's a good all right your turn we're going to go into phase one of amazing vintage streetwear. We're talking dead stock. We're talking magic. We're talking, I don't know, but I'm real excited about it. Uh, okay, so I scored some dead stock sweatshirts. Uh, I got a, it was a bulk buy. I got it off of Craigslist. Um, it was actually shipped to me. And I'm pretty, pretty, pretty excited about this. Um, I'm going to start with, there's two of them. There's two different designs. These are both Coors. Okay. You ready? Jen, are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Y'all ready for this? Bam. So we got Coors all over print. Gorgeous skiing. You know how I feel about my skiing, guys. Uh, so now I've got an all over print. Um, this is like 80s, uh, probably late 80s. All over print, made in the USA, gorgeous. I have two of these. I've got one medium and one large. Okay, okay. And dead then, stock. Did you dead, say stock. dead stock. Dead stock. Like they're all in their original uh, plastic bags. Um, and then this one is actually like I love the skiing one because of my own personal feelings about the skiing stuff. But this is actually. Yes, very minty, Allison. This is actually, an, after talking to Allison about it, this really is the better one. Uh, this is a mountain climbing one. It says mountain climbing, ascent team. Like, look at how amazing. They smell a little funky. They smell, they like, smell this, like the plastic. This puffy plastic stuff. That's what it, they, yeah, you like can smell the stored. plastic. It's been stored in plastic it's bags. It's kind of a chemical-y smell. Um, but these are Coors Mountain Climbing Expedition. Uh, all over print. You can see the front, the back. Like these are just the coolest sweatshirts ever. Um, and these uh, I actually got. So I got two of those. I got 13 of these ones, guys. 13, all mediums and larges. Um, smells like money. I actually, I actually did. I did send one of these. One of these. I'm down one already because I did send one of these to Allison. Um, I knew she would be madly in love with them and when I sent her the pictures and she just about keeled over. Um, and so I did send one to her because, mm, let's face it. She's because been, she's, she's a good been, friend. She's been a good friend of the show, guys. She's been a good friend. She sent us lots of stuff. So I was more than happy to send one of these her way. It's in the mail right now. She should, she's probably going to get it tomorrow or the next day. I don't know how long it takes priority to get up to Alaska from here. Um, but it should, should be more than two or three days. So. Uh, but seriously, guys. So, um, all right. How, talk about how much did you pay for the whole lot of them? Well, I paid four hundred plus shipping, but I he paid more for the shipping than I paid for. So I paid four hundred and twenty-four dollars. Divide four hundred and twenty-four dollars by fifteen. Um, it's just under thirty dollars a piece. Um, yeah, she said she also said she did be a lot. Anyway, twenty-eight dollars and twenty-seven cents. Yeah, so I paid twenty-eight dollars and twenty-seven cents per sweatshirt. I have them listed right now for about two hundred and fifty dollars. I don't really want to sell them for less than two hundred piece. They may take a little while. These are kind of the kind of thing that I'm guessing once we get into fourth quarter, I'll really sell them quickly. Um, but 
those are my number one magical streetwear score of the week. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I'll go through a couple of these other ones quickly. This is just a polo sport, Ralph Lauren polo sport, uh, pullover, sweatshirt, half zip. Uh, the sweatshirt, uh, the polo sport, there's lots of different uh, Ralph Lauren uh, brands or lines out there. The polo sport, I would say, is the most popular, I would say, within the streetwear community is the polo sport stuff as opposed to just polo Ralph Lauren, Ralph Lauren, Lauren Ralph Lauren, Chaps Ralph Lauren. Uh, the polo sport is the most popular, so I was pretty excited to pick that up. Ken says, 200 too cheap. Listen, if I I already listed, I, I didn't list quantities, so I just have one medium, one large of each uh, design, and they're still sitting there. They haven't sold yet. So because I have uh, 14 of them all together, um, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and list them crazy high and then just sit on them for a year. Because she's not going to list quantity so to me, one at a time. If, yeah, so if me, oh, if Kat, see, Kara just asked that. She's just going to keep relisting once they sell. If you put multiple quantity when you have something that looks that rare or should be that rare, you don't, mm -hmm. you, you're kind of, you're, you're kind of taking away the sense of urgency to purchase it. So. Yes, I do have watchers. There's one other person that has uh, one of each of them, um, just larges of, of each of them. They have them listed for 150. They have them listed under t-shirt, vintage t-shirts. Like I don't know why they have them in that category. Um, the problem with that is that I found them because I was literally looking for Coors sweatshirts, and so they did come up. But if somebody was just wanted to look at vintage sweatshirts, um, there's a good chance they would never even see them because they haven't listed right. the t-shirt category. She has 15 of them total, Jen. 14, because I gave 14, one. 14, because she gave one. Yeah. 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 Create the scarcity. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, this is just another cool skiing. I've had a lot of skiing sweatshirts this week because this is a... a Brian had a uh, ski sweatshirt and I actually showed in the sourcing video another one that you had found grabbed for me opportunity mm -hmm. village um, So yeah, got that one and then this one. This is the last sweatshirt and Then I'll give it back to you. This sweatshirt came in my uh, box that I get from Pennsylvania and It's awesome and I actually wasn't super familiar with this brand but you're a little bit more familiar with it but the IOU it's like a it was kind of like the bum equipment equivalent mm -hmm. it was up of bum equipment that time of, uh, yeah. it, this yeah, is dated 80s, 90s. 1991. So probably like late eighties, early nineties was when it was super popular, but it's a really nice, a really cool sweatshirt. That's like, it's embroidered here in the center and then it's got like, the, I don't even know what you call this, like the paint with the kind of puffy ish paint that's on it, but it's just, just like, puffy. yeah, it's just, just like puffy, a really cool, shirt paint. Yeah. really cool streetwear kind of funky sweatshirt. All right, there we go. Oh, get used. Speaking of get used, I'm still kicking myself. Last night, one of the little pop-up streetwear shops we stopped in at the container park had a pair of dead stock with tags, acid wash, get used overalls, uh, men's. They were big. Um, I'm still kicking myself. I almost bought them, but he had them priced a little too high. A little, not enough meat on the bone for me. But they, I, I wanted them. He had them priced at 75. I would have paid 40 to 50 because I think I can get 200 nice. for them. But 75 was a little bit hefty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Karen uh, wants to know what I was talking about. My best find ever yesterday. That's still coming. We I'm didn't saving that, that for last. And let me tell you, it's my best find ever as far as money paid and what is, is that going to be value. your last thing. Yeah. Well, yes. I'm gonna. I have a couple of other ones to show, but yes, it'll be my last. My do, last grouping. How many things do you have? These are my last four things. Okay. So go ahead and show yours. So again, talking about this is vintage is my theme this week apparently, uh, but I picked up this really cute '70s kind of boho prairie dress. Got some, you know, the eyelet lace at the bottom, um, little smocking on the back smocking that's what they call that that elastic in the back but this is the front and when i grabbed it i paid four dollars for it and when i grabbed it uh one of the straps was broken uh but i i sold i, I sewed it i should say not sold it i sewed it and i didn't do too badly i'm not mm -hmm. a great uh seamstress but i think this dress is super cute really uh cute. You know, I think uh, girls that would wear this now that would pull off this kind of look with a pair of combat boots and one of those little bra shirts underneath it would look fantastic. Super cool for the summer. Uh, not something my body type could pull off, but I think it's adorable. It's adorable. I think I'll sell it for about 50 or 60 bucks. Um, more vintage. I picked this up. <clears throat> 
I paid $5.99 for the set. This is what you call a Penoir set. It's, it's P-E-I-G-N-O-I-R, Penoir. It's uh, what you call vintage lingerie when you have a set. It's usually like the, the outer robe and then the night nighty underneath it. So this one is definitely very uh, 70s, late 70s, early 80s. So it's got this little kind of sheer robe that goes, little jackety robe. But then underneath, it's just sheer lace. And then you've got the bows. So this is back when, if you can picture kind of like Bridget Bardot, um, very glam 60s, heavy makeup, lots of hair with the cat's eyes. This would be that type of era of like Hollywood, sexy mm -hmm. glam pinup, like 60s pinup, not like 40s and 50s pinup. So uh, like I said, I paid about $4.50 for this. Ooh, I'll probably yeah. sell it for about 75. Um, black, you don't find that often uh, in vintage. It's it, You find like the peach and the pink and the turquoise, but black you don't find quite as often. And then we were talking, and Katie was just talking about this brand too. <clears throat> Um, this is a funny story. Polo Sport, when she reached over and grabbed that one. I didn't even, well, no, that was a different one. Oh. So we were just about ready to leave. We were done at one particular Savers and we were standing where the women's jackets were. And all of a sudden I saw this bright yellow and I was like, oh, hello. And I reached over and went, yoink. And it was Polo Sport. I didn't show it because I just, I had too much stuff to show, but it's a Polo Sport, but it's the, the, um, RLX, right? Mm -hmm. That's the brand. Mm -hmm. um, but it's part of the Polo Sport line. And so I grabbed it and she watched me grab it right in front of her. But we weren't looking anymore. So it wasn't like I was I was stealing it from you. And she goes, <gasps> like that. And but then she's like, Well, what, what about this? And then she reached over and there was another one. <laughs> RLX Polo Sport. Uh it's just a blue uh windbreaker. I paid up a little bit for it. I paid about $10 for it. Um, but I think I'll probably sell it for about 50 or 60. Mm -hmm. um, the question Enrica asked is, do you know the era because of how it looks or because of the tags? It's a combination of both. I'm, you know, I've been selling vintage for a long time, so I can peg a decade based on a style on almost anything. Um, but part of it is the tags and part mm -hmm. of it is, is the style. Yeah. Um, and then this is my last item that I'm going to talk about. This is, um, this I picked up at uh, one of our places, uh, St. Jude, that little place that we went to. I paid $20 for it. They had all of their outerwear was 50% off, so it was priced at $40, and I paid $20. Um, but look at this thing. This is not vintage. Uh, this is actually current. It is a this heavy wool overcoat with this military look to it, though, with this heavy gold brocade everywhere. Um, and I could tell when I picked it up that it was really nice quality, but I didn't rec know much about it until I picked up the brand. And the brand I recognized a bit. So, Farad? Farad? Uh, Gianni Farad. And it is a high-end European brand. And all, another good top tip to pick up, if something is uh, higher end, or another, not it does. It's not always the case, but it's frequently the case. If you find something that has multiple sizes, it has European sizing, and uh, all different types of sizing on something, it's generally speaking, you're going to know that it is a higher end. Interesting. So this is a men's jacket, and it retails for about eight hundred dollars. This is new. Um, I'm probably going to sell it for about two hundred. There are no no others available. There's one. Why so? Why not more? Um, maybe I'll sell it for more. I don't know. Just because that brand doesn't sell for. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know. That's it. That's it. That's all I got. Nice. Yeah, that's Saint Jude. My my magical piece that I will be showing you guys last. So hang around, guys, because I'm telling you, it is probably the best score as far as thrifting goes that I've ever ever done. Best single item score ever. And that's gonna be here in a few items. But I'm telling you, and I got it at St. Jude's the same place you got that one. Uh yeah. Yeah, still there are plenty of things that are made in China that are still high end. There are mm -hmm. high end couture brands that are made in China. Yeah. There's just different factories and different you can tell by the way something is made, whether it's well made or not. Um and that one I just knew for, you know, mm -hmm. by the by the tag. Yeah, so uh, so here's the jacket that I got at Buffalo Exchange, 
And it's interesting because they only had it priced at like $24. And I was like, why is it so cheap? And I think part of it is because it's not the starter brand. And part of it was because I had a couple of stains on it, but I was actually able to wash it and get the stains out. Um, but this is a really nice vintage 80s uh, starter-esque uh, jacket. And it's got the uh, the full kind of spell out, 49er spell out on the back, which is not as um, common. And uh, But the brand is Stahl Urban, which is a brand that's been around for a really long time. It's been, I don't remember exactly when it started, but it's been around for a long time. But this is from the 80s. Um, and so I can still, if you go and look, I've really been enjoying having access to um, Terapeak and being able to look. So I just mm -hmm. looked up just the Stahl Urban brand, uh, Stahl Urban jacket, and looked at the sales for the last year, the last 12 months, um, highest to lowest. I can still, I, sh I can still sell this jacket for like $150. Um, but it's just a really cool. I like and the back. I like the back. You don't see 49ers spelled out that frequently on, on their stuff. So yeah. I like that. And um, here's the other thing that's that's really cool about this particular one is the size. Look at that size, guys. 4XL. It's a four. This is, you know, it's not very common to find these really big sizes for vintage. Um, so this is this is a nice big size. Uh, so I think I should be able to easily sell that for $150. Um, uh, See, Fabian says, do you only pick up vintage football gear? I, I mean, I pick up vintage, vintage in general and vintage sports stuff. I'm going to pick up if it's, if it's good, if I think it's good. Um, as far as finding a lot of football stuff at the bins, but you never pick it up. I mean, if it's vintage, like you should be picking it up. I mean, sports mm -hmm. wears, that's the thing. It's like, you know, styles change, um, but sports stuff is pretty much always like, for instance, let's say your team is the 49ers. Um, if you're a fan of the 49ers, like you can sell a 49ers jacket, whether it was made in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, the you know last year, they're always going to hold their value. Those never go out of style to a certain degree. Vintage stuff sells for more. Yeah, so. but even current stuff sells. So it's like, yeah. Anyway, um, so this is a Lee, an awesome acid washed uh, Lee trucker jacket. It's a small. And this is like probably 90s because it's uh, assembled in Mexico of USA parts. So I'd say this is 90s. Um, but I should be able to sell this for a good amount. Um, I think I have it listed out. If I could sell this for 100, I'd be excited. Uh, but these Lee jackets and this particular, um, this is the PATD. It's like 153438. If you put in that the, those numbers, uh, it comes up and you can see like the comps and everything. But this is just like a ridiculous... Um, acid washed. I actually got this at that Goodwill, the one that I like mm -hmm. because they actually have jackets. Uh, I got this one. I got another starter jacket that I didn't bring up to show. Uh, um, uh, was it Yankees starter jacket? And then I also got this awesome Levi's uh, Sherpa lined faux Sherpa shearling made in the USA 80s uh, trucker jacket. I actually have another one that I already bought recently. So it was really easy to list this in like two seconds because it's just like off the size. What did you pay for that one? Um, I paid 20 bucks for it. So I paid up for it. But the other one I paid 40 bucks for. I, should, mm -hmm. I, I you know, once, especially once we, it comes closer to fourth quarter, I think I should be able to sell it for 150. So, um, all right, I got three more things, guys. Bear with me here. These all three are cool items. This I also got at Buffalo Exchange. I talked about this before, Patagonia. Um, the Patagonia Cinchilla. But specifically the Cinchilla. Specifically the Cinchilla. Um, and uh, they call this Snap Tea. Snap Tea is, uh, is, is a trademarked um, name that they use, um, this type of like Snap, snap Tea. Um, this one's made in Mexico. I would say this is probably uh, late 90s. Um, but these uh, Cinchilla fleece jackets go for quite a bit. I should be able to sell this anywhere for, for uh, you keep anywhere. You're moving, so you're making everything Sorry. fuzzy. From a hundred to one hundred and fifty dollars, um, because it's this nice red color with black. Um, they only had it priced at around like twenty two, twenty four dollars. So I went ahead and, and yoinked that up right there. 
Um, yeah, and really Justin, nice as far as that jacket, is that what you're asking? Is that a biggie? Yeah. No, we would definitely say if it was biggie. I've uh, never found a biggie. Yeah, biggie is like generally 40s, 30s, 40s, 50s, uh, not as late as 70s mm -hmm. or 80s from when that jacket is. Uh, but big E something is like several hundred dollars into the thousands, depending yeah. on what the item is, not a couple hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, as far as like, uh, like I don't know specifically what, what Allison's referring to as far as like the uh, thrift stores looking at prices. I mean, there's a certain amount where when you're in the thrift store, like you have to price stuff to move. And so you, what we can get for it online is very different than what you get in thrift stores. So I think actually um, Buffalo Exchange is a great example of a store that know, they know what they have, they know the value, but they also need it to move and they want it to move quickly. So they price stuff at an affordable amount. So it's great for somebody like me where I want to go in and be able to flip stuff for vintage. Like that Patagonia, I can make a hundred bucks on it, but they're not going to price it for more than the 25 bucks because it's like they need to sell it. They can't, they can't just have it sitting around forever. Um, all right. So this jacket came from that same uh, kid that was selling. He has a little shop at the container um, park. Last night. Yep. Yep. Last night. And I paid up a little bit for it, but he had this price at $50. I can easily get at least $200 for it. I have a price. I already have it listed. I like took the pictures this morning. I already listed it. I have it listed for $250, um, but I would take $200 for it. It's in fantastic condition. This is a leather wool um, kind of varsity bomber jacket. And this is National Finals Rodeo NFR. Um, this is from the you know PRCA, the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association, and this is from 1992. And look at the back, full embroidered. Um, I've got comps uh, from 1995 selling for over $250. Um, and if you go and look at comps, like pretty much any year, recent as well as vintage, goes for 200 bucks and up. Um, so he had this price at 50 bucks. So I went ahead and bought it, and I've already got it listed. And this is just fantastic anything rodeo sells vintage and new um but when you get vintage like this in this kind of condition i mean you can't pass this up mm -hmm. and you were saying which one did you sell recently i sold one a, a little over a year ago something similar to that uh -huh. and you sold it for like a two fifty couple hundred couple hundred but yeah this is just amazing i think it was about it was at least two years ago so before we were together yeah pretty yeah. much um all right guys clark was trading amanda you're here just in time just in time down to the last item okay uh, so we were at St. Jude's and I was going through the jackets and I saw this and just based on the style and the condition, like, and the weight of it, the heft of it, um, I knew when I grabbed it, I was like, wow, this is really, really nice. But I didn't know right away what it was. Um, cause I just looked at it real quickly. Um, but like she said, uh, all of the outerwear stuff was on sale for 50% off. So I saw this jacket and I immediately grabbed it. And I started looking at it and I was like, okay, hey, what is this jacket? And it's a really cool bomber jacket. Really cool satin bomber jacket. It's reversible. Um, so I looked at the tag and the tag, when you look at it, doesn't immediately have a brand. Well, it turns out it's because it's reversible. And so this tag actually, um, you remove it once you wear it because it's a reversible bomber. So you can see like the threading up here. You're supposed to uh, take that threading out when you actually wear this. Um, but then I saw, as I was looking, I'm trying to see the little focus. See how it says RRL right there? As soon as I saw that RRL, I went, RRL. I think we were looking in the pocket. Did you find the tag in the pocket? Well, yeah, I did. Yeah, but I saw this first. So, yeah. I, so I, when I saw this, I realized it was Ralph Lauren. And not just any Ralph Lauren. It's double R Ralph Lauren. Double R is um, a higher line, a more valuable line of theirs that sells for um, much higher, but it started in 93, I believe is when that um, line came out. Um, so then I went and looked in the pocket and there is the tag, double R. Um, so this is just this amazing, you have talked about like the satin bombers, the souvenir, um, I think it's pronounced as Sukajan. The Japanese, but you know what I'm talking about those yes, souvenir tour I've jackets. I've never heard the word that you just pronounced. I've heard Japanese souvenir okay, well, bomber you, jacket. The the souvenir sukajan is it's the it's the the um the tradition of these jackets in Japan. And so this jacket was very much made like they actually made this with Japanese uh, Japanese um, woven threading threading whatever to make this a more authentic jacket and it's got the dragons and everything on it where does it have japanese woven threading uh well this is here i'll show you let me sh let me 
it's it's it says it in this in the um there's actually a description description here and it talks about it um oh I authentic see. japanese woven satin okay so i'm not just i'm not just pulling it out of my ass guys all right anyway it's reversible it's still new guys this was priced five dollars this was priced at five dollars it was 50 percent off i paid two dollars and fifty cents this is not vintage this is currently available for sale on the ralph lauren website and i'm going to go ahead and give you guys a little screen share here and you can see how much this retails if you want to buy this jacket right now you can go ahead and go on over to the ralph lauren website and you can pay nine hundred and ninety dollars and so this is what i was talking about um, i just want to know what idiot donated this jacket new well somebody who's it current have, yeah i don't know it's a current jacket uh so you can see right here it says made from authentic japanese woven satin that stays true to the originals of the 1950s and so you can see this is what it looks like um when it's turned around the other way it's like this kind of cool camo leaf thing i mean i don't say it's an idiot it's somebody who probably has a lot of money and just doesn't really care about it or it could be somebody who for some reason got somebody else's stuff and needed to get rid of it and they just donated to st jude's i don't know i mean same person <laughs> amanda says a really pissed off girlfriend donated that <laughs> <laughs> it's very possible but yeah so that currently retails i'm gonna go ahead and stop the screen share um so this is new it retails for a thousand dollars uh i have a price right now so it's at about eight hundred and fifty dollars because you know uh it's not i don't know that ruffler never like has sales and stuff like this so if somebody wanted to buy this um they can get it for a hundred bucks off or they can make an offer i don't know but two dollars and fifty cents i paid two dollars and fifty cents for this jacket so that for me is probably my greatest single item score for the the very small amount i paid mm -hmm. to the price that it will sell for just to ask did you copy the description for the listing oh probably did you i would have uh, i didn't i didn't copy it like word for word but all the stuff that i thought was important like it says that it's got it's japanese woven silk it says that um i you know i like they don't they use tour jacket on theirs they don't use souvenir they don't use the word sukajan both of those description he said not title, but sure. So what I'm saying is I did not use word for word from the description. I use key specific keywords that I thought were important for people to find it. Um, but that is my crazy town. Now I have to ask you guys, did I, was that clickbait? Did I overhype the piece? I don't know. I don't know. You tell me, you tell Alexis me. Alexis thinks that's better than dead flatbird. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's better than a dead flat bird, but she paid up for those. So I did, yes, I paid up for the those. Difference. I uh, didn't find those. I didn't find those out. Greg in a while. says, "Laura, bring your ass to Chicago with that <laughs> luck." Seriously, uh, we actually all three of us got some great stuff, but uh, you know, it was really nice to go shopping in so many stores. We thrifted every day. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, that means that we weren't listing as much, so we need to, you know, pay the piper this week and get up, get in there, and start listing more. Uh, but we did both score a lot of stuff. Now that goes to show if you go to that many places, you're going to find some, a great variety of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I would love to source like that every week. Um, but I also need to, you know, work and make the money, not just spend it, but mm -hmm. we did do really well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now we got, and yeah, I already have that jacket listed. Cause I'm telling you anything that's like a value like that for any of you guys who have, uh, whatever you want to call them, death piles, money piles, profit piles. Mm -hmm. Um, at the very least, pull out the stuff that you know is worth a lot of money and get it listed. Don't let stuff sit around. If you know you've got something that's worth fifty, a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, like don't let it sit around. Don't you know? You really need to be strategic about what you list. Um, if you have more than you can do right away, and start going after those high dollar items. Don't let them sit around because otherwise you're just wasting your, your right. money and time, and it's not good. Not good. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> need a full-time lister you can be a full-time seriously buyer. you know what though alexis for me i actually have fun when it's like i was saying earlier when it's really cool stuff that i'm excited about i like the listing process that's why i can't just do the whole volume based like oh just getting 20 dollar items and just doing volume because that's not fun to me i mean to each their own but for me it's like i want to find really cool stuff and then it's fun to list it too so if i was just 
sourcing. Like this week, we sourced every day. Too much. Too much. Like it was. It fun. was fun, but we were fun exhausted for one by week. Thursday. It was fun for the one week, but I did not feel bad about not doing any more on Friday. So yeah. And Greg announcement: Vicky's birthday month has become Vicky's birthday week. That's true. It's my <laughs> birthday week. I will very, be very my birthday on Saturday, next Saturday. So yep. yep. Awesome. Awesome. Kathy, one time I found a four pairs of double R Ralph Lauren boots new. That is awesome. So I have uh what is on the birthday present list? Ah, um, I, I, don't, I don't ask. I don't ask for hey, you try to a little bit and then I'm like, yeah, I already have it figured out. So back Okay, off. so he, the one thing I've been asking for since before Christmas last year is I need a new license plate frame. I have a license plate frame that has pink bling around it and the weather has like ripped off most of the bling. Mm. It's like six bucks free from China. Can you just buy me it? That's all I want. Yeah, so get on it. Order go it. dog go 28th birthday. Yeah, my new favorite viewer. Um but yeah, I have uh we don't have it. We're going out to dinner with um, two other couples. Yeah. Uh, really. Friends of ours. I so. think that's 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 pretty much it. Going out to dinner. One other couple, actually. I think one of them can't come. So, like, one other couple going out to dinner Saturday night. Going to my favorite sushi place. That's, that's about it. That's I'll, probably it. Do, I'll probably do picture day on Friday so that Saturday can be her day to whatever she wants to do. I don't know. Maybe she wants to do Saturday garage sales. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So, we'll see. All right, guys. We got to go. We got stuff to do. I think we might go jump in the pool. I don't know. Yep. Uh, but thank you so much for hanging out with us. I hope that um, you got you guys enjoyed getting to see all of our fun stuff that we found this last week. Well, I didn't say that just to get re no. Pl nobody send me one. Somebody may have bought me one. Please don't send me a license plate <laughs> frame. That was not what I was saying. I was just somebody asked what was on the Allison's list. Gonna that was the only thing I asked for. I was going to send you SpongeBob. Two ones. things. I don't want SpongeBob. Well, that's too bad. That's I'll send it back. You're I don't care. Ungrateful. <laughs> I'll be ungrateful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much, and we will see you on Wednesday. We will see you Wednesday. Bye. Bye.